to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Roll. Graham Cassoon. Here. Tobin. Here. Kleiner. Here. Johnson. Here. John Francois. Here. Burr. Here. Green. Here. Massey. Here. President Rodriguez. Here. And we have a quorum. Approval of minutes. Tonight we have the minutes from the May 19, 2020 Common Council meeting. So moved. Massey seconded by. All in green. All in favor. Aye. 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 Correspondence. Nothing is here. <clears throat> For the good of the city, anyone online would like to speak? Speak. Okay. Remarks to the mayor. Uh, good evening. And uh, just sound like Maisie. <laughs> uh, I wanted to begin tonight with um, recognition of what June nineteenth is. Is that you know we've had two protests in Middletown, both thankfully peacefully, and the third one in the town of Walkill equally as peaceful. And, but I think America is starting to get the point. And we all have something to learn throughout this process, and hopefully all of us will. And, but one of the things that I've learned out of this whole, um, the demonstrations, uh, is that the, we don't know enough about each other, enough about our backgrounds. Andrew, you're pretty good at posting uh, these types of comments, and so, I think it's important that we recognize certain significant historical events, not like Donald Trump by holding a rally on June 19th, but by, first of all, learning what Juneteenth is. And that's why we have the slide up here about the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921, 99 years ago, and what communities are doing, and this was organized by um, Mayor Rob Rollison out of Poughkeepsie, is issuing proclamations where communities would recognize the importance and significance of of Juneteenth, as it's called, and the Emancipation Proclamation and the uh, acknowledging the, the wrongdoings of 1921 where about 300, at least 300 people, I think, uh, were murdered. So um, Mayor Rollison submitted this to the regional mayors and asked us if uh, we would be so kind to also join Poughkeepsie. And these are the Poughkeepsie's words. and. We just changed the names, and, um, but we're recognizing it. So I'd like to read it. Whereas our country is made up of people from every nation on earth who are declared equal not only in freedom, but also in justice, both of which are essential for a healthy human civilization. And whereas on New Year's Day, January 1st, 1863, using his war powers as president, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation providing that all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state shall, quote, shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. And whereas, and whereas the Emancipation Proclamation made the permanent abolition of slavery a union war aim and provided the legal framework for the emancipation of nearly all four million slaves as the Union armies advanced. And whereas, Hearing of the proclamation, many slaves escaped to Union lines as the army units moved south. And whereas Texans began the celebration of Juneteenth in 1866 with community events such as the parades, cookouts, prayer gatherings, musical performances, and historical cultural readings, some communities purchased land for the Junete Juneteenth celebrations such as Emancipation Park in Houston, Texas, and as freed families migrated from Texas to other parts of the United States, they carried the Juneteenth celebration with them. And whereas Al Edwards, a freshman state representative, put forward the bill 1979, making Texas the first state to grant this emancipation, emancipation celebration. And on June 1, 1980, Juneteenth became an official Texas state holiday, and since then, 45 other states and the District of Columbia have also declared it an official holiday, and resolved that I, Joseph M. Stefano, mayor of the city of Middletown, do hereby designate that June 19th, 2020, as Juneteenth, 
and a witness hereof, I set my hand upon and caused the seal of the city of Middletown, um, signed here today and will be presented on June 19th to local leaders of the uh, demonstrations in the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. So I think it's important and um, what we'll try to do, Jerry, you're usually the historian, and um, maybe if, you know, frequently we can bring up events like this that affect other people too. And, um, and we're um, be very happy to do so and recognize what's going on um, in the world here. So my next is an update on the COVID-19. And as of June 15th, uh, the city of Middletown has 1,134 positive cases. As you can see by the slide, we are number two. The town of Wallkill is number three. So between the two of us, I believe we're around 2,000 or a little bit over 2,000. And I've given the reasons before. It's not because of um, people here aren't doing what they're supposed to do, at least in the first phase and backwards that uh, our residents are mostly people who work hard-working, blue-collar working people, working in hospitals, working in supermarkets, working in government, and working in many jobs. We've had quite a few um, city employees test positive and have recovered, but we still, as the governor keeps saying, is we need to uh, take precautions because New York is actually, uh, has not only um, studied the curve, but we are in a pretty significant decline but we can't lose fact, sight of the fact of what's happening in the rest of the country. So as of yesterday afternoon, uh, we did open up the Middletown Skate Park. And the park has been open. We uh, will continue to monitor it. I've been over there now two days in a row. And as I said prior to this, is the community was cooperating on the wearing of masks and the social distancing. The skate park is not, uh, they're not cooperating. They're tearing down the signs. They're violating the, the rules of the um, of social distancing. It's mostly young people not wearing masks. I've spoken to them um, again today. Um, a couple of them got very nasty. A couple of them put on their mask. And I advise them that, listen guys, this is not something that we're gonna babysit. And I put that on my social media post. We're not going to be sending police here or city hall staff to tell you to comply with the law. Um, I sent the email to um, Chris Brinkerhoff and asked her to coordinate with Mark Pengel and DPW to put up better signage, more permanent signage, because some of them said, well, we didn't know we had to wear a mask and um, okay, good argument. Uh, they, they know they have to wear it, but they didn't know they had to wear it while skating. So uh, we're gonna put up some permanent signage and we're gonna give it a few more days. But parents, if you're listening, all the parents who called me and sent me emails about why aren't you opening up the skate park, you are now responsible for conveying the message to your children, and it's mostly children that are using it, young people in their teens and younger, that if they're not wearing a mask and they're not social distancing on the skate park, that we will fence it in for the rest of the season. It's just as simple as that. We're not gonna use police resources to go over there, have confrontations as one kid had with me today. Um, very, uh, uh, Maria was with me when we were taking a walk through downtown and just unbelievable that, um, that how the, the fact that he thought that he can just do whatever he wants and ignore the safety of others. and. Uh, so I, I told them you're the kind of guy that's going to ruin this for everyone else because we're not going to put those resources into monitoring uh, the skate park. So we'll give it a little bit more time, but if you do see a fence go up around the skate park, and it won't be the orange fence, it'll be like a construction type fence, then um, we'll have to uh, live with that for the rest of the summer. But parents, please speak to your children. Please, you can play this tape of them. You can get a recording on Facebook. Whatever it takes to convey the message that we are not going to be um, constantly going to the skate park reminding people to put on their masks. Uh, the equipment for the steam cleaner came in. That's one of the reasons why we're opening up skate park and the uh, parks. Today, uh, we opened up, I think, at least two. And I believe Davidge is now open also. So at least three of them are now open. 
uh, Maple Hill and Academy um, are also opened. Uh, the equipment will be steam cleaned on a daily basis. Some communities are doing nothing. They're putting up signs, um, you know, you're, we're, we're not maintaining this equipment. You're at your own risk. We felt it was important enough that, um, I don't agree with that, by the way, that we want to protect your kids and the kids in our community. So we're going to take whatever steps we can to make sure that at least on a daily basis, all of this equipment will be steam cleaned. I believe this equipment um, gets up to 360 degrees, so it kills everything on the equipment. It's heavy duty stuff. Um, we purchased it under the uh, federal COVID grant uh, secured through uh, Congressman Maloney's office. And we'll be using it not only on parks, but we also bought two smaller machines and we're looking at a third. We'll be using it for the senior center. We'll be using it for Paramount Theater. Uh, the police station will be buying one also and we'll be using that probably in the, in the city hall complex. Be doing downtown benches and park benches and park pavilions when opened up. So we're very serious about making the investment that's necessary to do what we can to keep people safe. But at the same time, people need to continue to cooperate and parents need to get through to their children that I, again, I'm going to, you're going to wake up someday and you're going to see us an eight foot fence around the skate park if we don't get compliance. On a positive note, outdoor dining is here. And as you can see in the, uh, the far left, is a new concept came up uh, maria bruni came up with this plan met with business owners individually um, still a large part of the uh, business activity with the restaurants is outdoor i mean curbside pickup and we um, you know we do have a shortage of parking in our lots now because two of them were under construction one reopened today but the uh, so people were parking on the streets quite a bit and uh, not leaving room for um, in and out business for not only the restaurants, but for antique stores or the beauty supply store and other businesses in the downtown area. So these are spots that are designed to be uh, 15 to 30 minutes only while picking up food. Um, police will be enforcing it. Uh, and, and we're just hoping people would cooperate and not park there for extended period of times because all you're doing is hurting the um, other businesses in the downtown area. So the outdoor dining, as you know, we did not um, we did not extend the public spaces to allow alcohol to be served. What we did do is that we designated four areas in downtown: uh, the Run for Downtown Park next to Something Sweet, Jerry's Park, the King Street Walkway, and the North Street Park as areas where the bid district in conjunction with local businesses downtown will be putting up tables, small like cafe type tables and chairs. They'll be, uh, the businesses have agreed that are adjacent to or in the vicinity of those parks have agreed to provide some staff to keep it clean. Um, we also will have a bid district employee circling all four locations. They'll coordinate with, um, hopefully it'll be very busy and there'll be a lot of garbage produced, and but it'll be kept clean. And we're going to test it for and see how long it goes. The governor did uh, allow in his executive order that um, the city could assume the risk of allowing alcohol <coughs> to be served on public property or even going out in the streets. Some communities have closed streets. Um, but with that, uh, assuming that risk, becomes a lot of potential liability. So in con discussions with uh, my friend, Mr. Massey, uh, Miguel, the council president, Alex Smith, our attorney, uh, Maria Bruni, economic development director, we weighed the positives and the negatives. And the negatives of doing such a thing far outweighed the positives. Um, because it's not only um, assuming the normal risk, even if you have uh, the um, individual business provides you with liability insurance, indemnifying the city, that's not total indemnification. As we know, when something happens, the city gets sued no matter what. And in New York State, dram shop liability, which is when you serve alcohol on your premises, even in your own home, there's huge liability to doing so. So we decided to go against the serving of alcohol on public property. Uh, we have our sidewalk permits, our cafe permits. 
the governor has allowed a business to expand their um, existing outdoor permits to um, other parts of their own property and without going through the state liquor authority which usually takes six to eight weeks and even more so you'll see some businesses like carlos's pizzeria out in Hampshire. Uh, he'll be using a couple of his parking spaces probably uh, at least from the diagram that i saw john i don't, I don't know if that's 100 percent correct but there um but some businesses are putting up tents but if you have a parking lot you can put up a small tent in your parking lot um, it can't be a permanent structure over it um, but the the rules are not made by us the rules are made by the state and the basis for this is to reassure people that um, you can get food to go downtown and you can go picnic in the park you can sit on king street with it there'll be sanitary facilities there i'm sure restroom facilities will be provided by the restaurants especially the ones where you bought the food at and uh, hopefully that'll give the ability of some of the downtown businesses to do a little bit more you are not required to buy food from a downtown restaurant in order to sit at these tables they are still public parks so if you bring a sandwich from home and you want to sit there that's fine also just no alcoholic beverages um, the james street parking lot the, the dri the final phase of the dri has begun festival square and james street are now torn up along with orchard street and the construction is underway and we expect this to probably be another maybe six weeks or so assuming the weather cooperates um, but the project um, um, when you see the the, uh, the diagrams and how it's going to look um, I, I think you're all going to be very impressed with the end result and you've seen the diagrams but the end result is going to be quite impressive this is the orchard street lot this is across from the old thrall library and uh, we're going to be uh, the heritage trail will be coming through on this piece also and through the back of the old former Woolworths building this was one of the projects not funded by the dri but by funded by you folks um, it's nearly complete um, meaning the sidewalk is in as you can see the the wooded guardrail is there uh, the lighting i believe is going to be up by the end of the week on the other side um, the Oak and Reed side and the, you know, the um, uh, Woolworth side, uh, that is, all that is torn out. If you haven't been here, take a look. The back of the church, you can now see the beauty of that um, and uh, really is going to be an impressive project. This was funded by the city of Middletown and that included the paving of the parking area and the, and the lighting of the parking area there. So um, there's also currently, there's a small little part of the Tompkins building maybe an eight by eight or so structure that um, it pinches between the church and Tompkins. The sidewalk pinches down to maybe five or six feet. That little building will be torn down. And um, so it'll be open and, um, and more visible and well lit. And um, we were granted an easement from the Foley property for a drainage easement. So we put the drainage in. And so we're also in exchange for the easement will be paving that portion too so it's going to be a very attractive part of our downtown and give those east main street businesses people who want to take a two-minute walk will have plenty of parking on orchard uh, we're also working on the paramount audio project uh, the infrastructure work is to begin soon that's the rigging and then the installation of the equipment that's the new sound equipment this is a maria this was funded by us correct yeah, this is funded by the city through a prior capital budget line and um, the pro total project cost to be in the area of two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars the coronavirus uh, response small business loan program relief program um, the applications will be ready online on monday the funds allocated toward this program this is the same grant program through maloney's office of the um, purchase of the steam equipment we're allocating $160,000. This is not a downtown program. This is a citywide program. So anyone who is eligible for these loans. Um, it's for COVID-19 related hardships. In other words, if your business was closed or your business had loss of revenue, um, the determination will be uh, through Economic Development Office. Um, up to $5,000 at 0% interest. And per the eligible applicant, um, 
uh, and these are for-profit businesses that are eligible. Um, we're doing working capital loans, which we don't usually do, but uh, they will be eligible for under this program, and you must meet the eligibility requirements and HUD guidelines. So um, as I said, this is federal money, so we need to comply with the federal guidelines. As you know, we are here, phase two, and the types of businesses that are open are offices, real estate, essential and phase two in-store retail, uh, vehicle sales, rental, repair and cleaning, commercial building management, hair salons and barber shops, outdoor and takeout delivery food services. Um, the governor also allowed for outdoor dining in restaurants in this section. And over the weekend, he had a stern warning to both businesses and to individual communities that number one, if you have a license with the state, like a liquor license, a license to cut hair, any type of license, and you violate these protocols, um, you are in danger of losing your license along with getting a significant fine. He is not playing games on this. Some businesses have already lost one. Their license, I think you saw the Monroe uh, bar room that opened up, I think it was even prior to phase one. Um, my understanding is they were probably going to lose their license or face significant fines. So selling those few extra drinks really didn't seem so profitable now when you lose your business because you can't sell um, beer, wine, or, 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 or liquor. So that's his warning. Now the warning to the communities is if your numbers spike and our task force, which is going statewide, whether it's the Liquor Authority Task Force or the New York State um, Task Force, though I think it's called Pause Task Force, and your community is not enforcing things, then we will shut your community down. We're not going to shut down the whole state again. We're going to, um, he implied that it might not even be by region. So Middletown, New York, if we're not enforcing skateboard reg regulations, park regulations, mask regulations, business regulations when we get a complaint. If we are doing nothing and our numbers, as you can see, have already spiked and don't start leveling off, which they are, and but if they go back up, then he can, within his authority, shut down all businesses in Middletown, New York. That would not be good for them. It would not be good for the city. It won't be good for the residents of the city either. So people need to listen. These are not idle threats. These are realities. You see what's happening in 21 states, Texas, Florida, um, Alabama. All of these states are spiking once they reopen, and the governor's keeping a firm grip on it. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it, that's the law. He's made it perfectly clear that local authorities, that means mayors, county executives, have no authority whatsoever to tell you that you don't have to do what the state law says you have to do. Enforcement is a local um, responsibility, but they also have the task force going around. They have representatives from the Liquor Authority going around. And if they determine, <clears throat> they make a recommendation that Middletown, New York is not doing its job, then we could be shut down, Orange County could be shut down, and um, or the region could be shut down once again. So I encourage everyone to please cooperate. When you're out and you're with people, wear a mask. If you're out and you're by yourself and you're not around people, you don't really need to wear a mask. But once you come upon people, you need to put a mask on, whether you're on the trail, whether you're on the street. And it's just two basic things right now, wear a mask and social distancing, and we'll be able to get through this. He addressed what some of the places, in, especially in New York and some communities, are not paying attention at all. And we can relate because we have some of those communities now that are not paying attention at all. So it's our job to either shut those things down, skate park, or to enforce. My choice is going to be to shut down the facility because I don't want to be in a position where our police are struggling with, you know, teenagers over giving them a ticket for skateboarding. We'll just, we'll just eliminate it for, for the rest of the season. Phase three will be uh, personal care, um, uh, additional personal care uh, businesses. You're already barbershops and, the, and, bar, and uh, 
beauty salons are open. Uh, food services will be able to serve inside with 50% capacity. If you, and also the six foot separation between tables and, um, and they will continue at this point to at least July 3rd, and I assume it's gonna be beyond, to allow the extended outdoor dining. The, the separation of the six foot tables are important and certain signage is gonna be important. Uh, just a note that uh, we are going to, under the executive authority in the city, we are gonna reduce the current five foot separation between road and table to three feet which is the guideline by under the federal ADA guidelines. You can't do it for more than 200 feet. So basically walkways in front of a restaurant. Um, if there's a wheelchair, you need to give access to the wheelchair to get through. Um, but uh, a lot of our sidewalks don't have the ability to have to meet the um, outdoor dining guidelines that are in place. And we're going to ask the council to look at changing it permanently because um, some people that want to have outdoor dining, they're seeing that it's working for them, are um, looking to do it on a regular basis. And as long as they keep that three foot separation between curb and table and the ADA, which is the most restrictive thing in the, you can possibly get to is the American Disabilities Act protection, um, has the um, ability to reduce it to three feet with the qualifier that you can't do more than 200 feet in a row and that uh, you got to give priority to someone who's walking through with a wheelchair. So we're, one of the good things that came out of this is businesses that we've been talking to for years trying to encourage them to put outdoor tables because it looks nice, people feel more comfortable, parking their car, riding by, they see the business activity. Um, they are now doing it this year out of necessity, but uh, they're liking it. <coughs> Excuse me, as you know, the $5.1 million uh, budget shortfall is still our projection. The county exec came on today on his call and said that the sales tax um, collections are down 10% year to date. Um, I don't think the quarter though of the March, April, May quarter is included in that because you don't file until June 20th, except unless you're a, a monthly filer and that's based on volume. But the, uh, the small businesses don't record until, um, don't report until June 20th. So we'll get a better idea of the impact of the first six months of the year um, when the reporting goes in at the end of June. So we'll probably get better numbers in July. But there, we're still projecting that shortfall. And we're going to be, of course, absorbing that, hoping that one of these vaccines that is now in phase three comes about. And... Um, that the United States buys some from, um, was it Astra, AstraZeneca? That's the phase three one, the one that came out of Oxford University. So uh, we're hopeful, but um, from a health perspective, but we're also hopeful from a uh, budget shortfall perspective that we need to have activity. And that's why, again, it's important for people to comply and not have this thing bounce back and spike on us like it has in other communities. And our last slide of the day, is usually the census. Um, we have leveled off on participation. Our numbers are not um, moving much where we were moving, you know, a couple points a week. We're now moving tenths of a point per week. Um, so we need you to participate in the census, get your family and friends to participate, get your constituents, call them up, close people that you know, ask them to fill it out. It takes no time on the computer, and um, you can do it by phone. They have uh, Spanish, Chinese, English, um, multiple languages on, on phone, and on the computer also. So um, to repeat, our sales tax revenue is our second highest revenue source in the city. Without it, we will be, um, if, without getting counted and we start losing a percentage of that total, then we will be in dire straits for future budgets. And um, Port Jervis in the last census had a loss of population and it cost them hundreds of thousand dollars a year. And that's for 10 years. Port Jervis is actually doing a little bit better job than us on counting right now. They're about two or three points ahead of us. Now, 
this is households they're counting, not people. So we only know about the household numbers, but we need to have people participate. If, you're, if you don't care about the city revenues, you should care about your school district revenues. That's what it's based on also. Other federal aid, disaster aid, all of these things kick in. If you have a problem and you're looking to the government for help, if we don't have all of our people counted, we are not going to receive our fair share. And lastly, I was said that was last slide, but it's not. Um, the uh, we're going to be we're putting together a virtual town hall meeting, myself and the chief, in which we are hoping to outline to the public um, what the Middletown Police Department does. And um, as you see, the discussion nationally about defund police. Um, I've said it on social media. I'll say it here to you. I think it's a foolish line politically, and I think it's a foolish line practically. That a lot of the, um, uh, and I know defund means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but just, and that's where the political part comes in, I think it's a stupid line. But what we have done in Middletown is when you look at any of the criteria that other communities um, are, are, even what the state is telling us to do, such as no chokeholds, They've been banned a long time in Middletown. When you talk about demilitarizing the police, um, in 2010, uh, we eliminated the SWAT team. Uh, when you look at uh, how the police interact with the public, I think all of you have witnessed um, the pop-up barbecues that Chief Iwancho and I think Chief Bethencourt might have started a little bit before that too, I'm not sure. but. Uh, but it's not just a barbecue. It's communication with our residents and the procedural justice platform that the police department has training on. Uh, we are also looking at body cameras. Uh, we've been waiting for the state of New York to um, impose them on um, the state police, which has not happened. They've been in pilot projects, and then they've got, they were stopped. Um, I was interviewed by the Times Hill Record today regarding that, and I said, no, I, we, we've been looking at them again, and this time I think we're gonna do it. There's gonna be a cost, but I think the technology today, um, the chief will explain to the council at our future meeting the, the systems that are he's looking at, so we're not looking to get into too much detail, but I just want people to know that we're, part of the governor's plan is to have the public tell us, me as mayor, you as members of the council, what do you expect, what do they expect out of a police department? Um, my comments to the paper included that neither the state nor federal government is going to tell us what our staffing levels need to be. That we determine that locally, but the, some of the major issues that we face as a city, especially a city that hosted a psychiatric facility that was defunded, and uh, people were put out into the streets and put out into homes is mental health calls. And the police are neither trained nor do they want to do mental health calls. But the police are going to respond to those calls. When, when, a, police op when a police station gets a call for a mental health call, they are going to respond. Would it be better if a social worker also showed up on the scene and then when it's under control, that it be turned over to them? Absolutely, and we fully support that. That's not gonna happen overnight. Um, and there's many cases of, that the, we're gonna go through at the, um, uh, the forum that we're going to be presenting um, from youth issues to mental health issues to drug addiction, Nicarn, Narcan, all those things. Um, you know, they, they say police shouldn't be involved in certain things, but when their child overdoses and the police show up with Narcan, they're very happy that the police are trained in that area. So there's pluses and minuses, but uh, we, we are not going to be um, forced into buying into a, at least I'm not, going to be forced into buying into a national slogan. And every community is different. If, if, you know, if you have the chokehold in your community, God bless you. You make the noise and bring about change. We did it many, many years ago. RPD is a fully accredited department. We have, um, um, can we do more? Yes, and we're talking about that, but I think we've made significant strides, especially the past two years, where uh, this procedural justice program, and we're not perfect, but I think the dialogue that we have with the community now is a good one. 
I hope it continues. I hope the protests, if they so choose, continue in a peaceful manner. And then that'll bring about real change into nationally and statewide and locally. We do have some changing to put in place. And one of them is what I began with tonight, is talking to each other, learning more about different backgrounds and and, um, and, and your culture and my culture and, and how we were raised. So the talking is going to be a big part of it. And we're going to begin with, um, I, I arranged it with Pastor uh, uh, James Rollins, who has an interesting perspective because he also served as a commissioner in Middletown. And a lot of people don't understand that in Middletown we do have a civilian police commission. So if you have a complaint, all of those complaints are reviewed. And those complaints go to the police department, and it goes up the ladder through an internal affairs process, ultimately reaching the chief. And on serious things, the, um, the commission does get involved. So you do have a civilian review board in Middletown. So all the things, or not all of them, but a lot of the things they're shouting about nationally, we already do. The cameras, we don't, but we will be doing. And there's a couple other changes we're going to recommend. So um, I encourage the public, when we do set a date, to participate, we're going to have some panelists from the community. We're going to have some of our local ministers on, uh, hopefully a member or two of the Common Council, and we'll address um, the community's needs, answer their questions, listen to what they have to say, and um, we'll move forward um, based on that and make our determinations. But um, I just want to assure the residents of Middletown that defund police, from my perspective, is not one of the options. So the um, doing business differently in some areas. If the state and the county and the federal government pick up the responsibility for mental health calls, possibility, possibility, I think absolutely. Um, and you all are familiar with when we had domestic violence shootings in our community, uh, Chief Iwanchu reacted very quickly and brought safe homes, not only their program and brought them to the council, but we gave them an office in City Hall. I mean, I mean in the police station. So Safe Homes is actually embedded in the Middletown Police Station. They do a lot of the follow-up, and they do a lot of the community work that police officers are not trained to do. Um, but uh, the Safe Homes is coming in and taking that responsibility, and that's their expertise. So we have a model to follow, and we'll continue to do that as long as other agencies can fund those programs. Any questions? Well, Matthew. Mr. Mayor, I apologize if I missed this, but uh, did you <clears throat> address the reopening of City Hall? I did not because um, I haven't seen the guidelines yet. Um, my thoughts are that I'm looking right after the 4th of July. I think it's July Monday, July 6th, to reopen City Hall to the public. We're debating now. We have a reopening committee. Um, it's, uh, myself, uh, Chuck Mitchell, Alex Smith, and Maria Bruni. And we're looking at different options of whether we should be taking temperatures as people come in, uh, employees, the public, one way in, one way out type of situation. Our issue is complicated with the court, and I haven't discussed it with Jacob, but uh, we can't have the courtroom lobby area um, backed up with people in that narrow area because others should not have to walk by them. So. You know, you don't, it's, it's only like three feet wide, right. so uh, the ramp. So we're, we're going to have to make some changes, and we're trying to finalize the plan, and um, we'll have one uh, very shortly. Thank you. Anyone else? Alderman Kleiner? Um, thank you. On a, on a different subject, someone asked me uh, where we are on the bus station. I don't think we're anywhere on it. But. Well, you're, you're about right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a conference call tomorrow with Senator Metzger. She's coordinated a... Conference call with Coach USA. Good. I believe they are trying to get the uh, county possibly involved in the call also. Just as a reminder to all of you that this project is 90% funded by the federal government. Transportation monies pass through through the county. Um, I don't think the county has any direct dollars into it, but um, we have discussed in the past where the city would have to, if need be, take over the project. If we do, it would delay the project. Coach was sold, and um, you know, ten years of work went right down the drain. Oh. They put everything on hold, so we don't know what we're going to hear from Coach tomorrow. But I'm not confident that um, we're going to hear good news from them that they're going to move this along quickly. Um, what I'm urging Senator Metzger, 
Simon Woman Gunther, and we'll be having a conversation, and we've had conversations with the staff of Congressman Maloney, is to do something that, to put pressure. Uh, you know, transportation companies are, receive a lot of government money, a lot of subsidies. And without those subsidies, they don't survive that well. And, uh, you know, they're not going to maintain and just drop us because they were bought by some uh, financial group out of, um, you know, somewhere USA. Yeah. That the local coach is no longer a local coach. And we're going to see what pressure we can put on beginning tomorrow with the conference call with Senator Metzger. Uh, Jacob is, um, uh, is deeply involved in that. He can probably give you a little bit more of an update. Um, and uh, the, um, but uh, we're, we're at a point where we're thoroughly disgusted with Coach's response, and we need the big guns to come in, and that's um, Maloney, Gunther, and Metzger. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Thank you, Mayor. No, I got one more. Th I've got to thank you. We have um, the, you know, we had a pretty significant change order of $11,000 at the Woolworth building and uh, Harry Rotolo and Sons, um, the, you know, the budget on that property was exhausted and um, they could have just walked away from it and said, hey, we're not going to do the change order. And they did it and they donated that service to the city of Middletown, had a value of $11,000. So I want to thank Harry Rotolo and Sons for their, for their contribution to the city. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of business with them. It's always a good relationship. They do a um, fantastic job for us. And in this case, they donated $11,000 of services uh, for us to complete that project. Nice. That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, reports of department heads, economic development. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight on the agenda, you have uh, approval to submit our five-year con con I can't speak tonight consolidated plan. Uh, and our 2020 action plan. Um, I'd like to thank Patty in my office for putting that all together and, and getting it ready for, for submission. Also, um, the farmer's market started two weeks ago, and um, I just want to commend everybody for putting that together and the whole guidelines that we had to follow, the social distancing and with the farmers and, and, and the and the customers coming through. Uh, I know everybody followed the rules and it worked out real well. We got a lot of positive feedback from uh, the customers about how well organized and you know everybody had their mask on, the farmers as well, doing a fabulous job on how they're dealing with, with the public. So that's going smoothly. Also the um, tables that the mayor mentioned about the public spaces for eating. I want to say we purchased 30 of those, and they were the, the funds were donated by the Run for Downtown organization uh, to purchase that. So they donated that uh, to the Business Improvement District and the city. And that's all I have for tonight. Any questions for Maria? Thank you, Maria. Thank you. DPW Commissioner. Good evening. Um, I'm going to be very, very brief tonight, really brief, because <laughs> the mayor has updated you on most of the capital projects. I'm just going to zip through others very quickly. The ADA curbs and sidewalks, that uh, three and a half, four million dollar project. Uh, DOT is reviewing the plan, the contracts. Hopefully, we'll have a construction meeting soon and we'll get it started. Uh, traffic operation is moving along to the design and uh, they're approaching the final design and the preparation and the plans on the specifications. And uh, reminder again to the public, uh, please have the grass or your lawn uh, cut in a timely manner. Um, right now the city, city DPW is utilizing all of its employees from the water department, sewer department as much as possible with the street department. Uh, in order to do, and sanitation department in order to do the spring cleanup. So we are spread very thin. So please help us out by maintaining your own property. We got so many, I mean, huge numbers of parcels that we have to maintain our own city parcels by cutting the grass. Please cut your own grass. 
uh, we're hiring new, more part-timers in there to replace others that they, they had to go. But uh, long story short is you will be assessed, uh, you'll be, so you, you've already received letters. We've sent 700 letters for high grass. And we're going to be cutting the grass, uh, manpower permitted, and you will be billed for it. So please help us out. Also, uh, many times we get, uh, thankfully, we get many referrals from the council president, from Alderman Massey, from the mayor, Johnson, Alderman Johnson, everybody in here, they send us referrals, uh, Alderman Jude, about high grass and uh, other woman, Ram Kassoon, other my client. I might as well mention all of you guys. <laughs> so, uh, they do, they do, because it takes a village. Well, my point is, it takes a village to run this city. So please, if you see something, say something, call us at DPW, say this guy is backyard, the grass is four feet high, or what have you, because it's just our code enforcement, they cannot see all that stuff, and they can't be everywhere. So we need everybody's help, and I appreciate it. We do get a lot of referrals from everyone. Um, before you tonight, oh, so we discussed the spring uh, cleanup. Fourth ward started Monday, and then the third ward next week, the following week, the second ward, and, uh, and the following week, uh, first week, I think, of July, is the uh, first ward uh, spring cleanup. So, uh, again, if you see somebody bringing uh, garbage or uh, junk from the outside of the city, please report it to the police department or t after hours or to DPW during the hours. If you can take a picture of the person doing it with the license plate, you don't have to even show yourself. We can, we can take that information and do something with it. But we need to control uh, illegal dumping from outside the city because that's very costly for the city taxpayers. Um, before you tonight, you have uh, two resolutions, one for hiring, um, continuing the support and hiring CDM Smith for uh, uh, installing uh, flow meters uh, at uh, different, between different reservoirs in order to monitor the flow. That is required by DEC. And also DEC has required from us to um, in, to do an additional different safe yield model for our safe yield. Before we had a st static model, now we have to have a dynamic model in there that will monitor the, the stream levels as we are withdrawing water. I don't know when this is going to stop with the, with the DEC. I mean, I love them to death, but, but uh, they're really, it's one study after one study after one study. I don't know where we're going with this, but we're going to keep meeting their, uh, their demands and see where that's going to uh, get us. We are confident that we have the water to supply our needs and uh, what we are committed uh, uh, towards. So uh, with that, we'll be meeting with them tomorrow to delineate some wetlands in there, in the Indigo area and in the uh, uh, Shuangang area in there uh, to see if anything that we will be doing in installing the flow meters if it's going to have any impact on the wetlands, and we'll have to deal with that. We don't believe it will, but we'll have to check it out tomorrow with the DEC. And uh, I will conclude if you have any questions. <laughs> any questions? Alderman Kleiner. Um, Jacob, the week of July 4th, our recycling set out. I, I think there was an email about it. We set out recyclables on the usual Thursday, even though Friday's a holiday, or is that... Yes, because the reason behind it, usually when we have a holiday, I think that particular Friday we are off. So we usually, we don't pick up when we are off. We, we publicize, we send out our calendar that we're not going to be picking up recyclables that Friday because City Hall is closed. However, um, we cannot do it Saturday because, the, uh, because that's the 4th of July, right. the actual 4th of July, and the landfill or... Um, Orange County, uh, Orange County Transfer Station will be closed that day. Okay. So we can't keep the recyclables in our truck. So we're going to have to pick it up on Friday when City Hall is closed. So we'll be sending out, uh, we'll be sending out uh, an Excel, and that's another reminder for the public to use an Excel, please. It's, very, uh, it's a very efficient way of communicating immediately with people, like the mayor. He keeps re repeating that. It's worth repeating one more time. Sign up to an Excel. It's very easy. And uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're not going to be picking it up on July 4th. We're going to be picking it up Friday, which is July 3rd. Right. That's recyclables. Okay. So Thank everything you. on that week will be per schedule. Yes, sir. Yeah. Alderman John uh, I have a message for you, uh, Commissioner. It was from the resident of Hampshire. They want to thank you and your department for installing the stop sign on Hampshire. Very good. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank Alderman you. Green. 
Yeah, thank you. Just um, want to point out again that we can't pick up electronics during the yes, the exactly. Thank you yes, very much. and there will yes. be a, a drop off. Yes, there will be an. Uh, yes, there will be a date. Has a, it's already been um, assigned for a drop off uh, of electronics. So please do not put out computers, TVs, uh, you know, hard drive, microwaves. There's going to be another day. You can go to come and drop them off for free within certain limitation as set by the council and the mayor, the number of units, but that will be all advertised. Thank you. Alderman Massey. Jacob, we're going through a dry season. We're certainly going to begin in the last uh, week or so. We haven't had any moisture. How are we doing with our reservoirs? Uh, that's an excellent question. So far, we're, we're in great shape right now. We, we're, uh, I believe we are pretty, uh, we, we, we are full at this time. I get reports and we keep monitoring it because we adjust valves and running, you know, different, uh, but we're in good, very good shape at this time. Yes. Thank you. Alderman Jean Yes. Uh, I just want to uh, say, uh, just driving around the fourth ward, I see a lot of tires. Is there anything we could do with that? I know we don't pick up tires when we, we do, do it. We do. There's a limitation, number of tires. That's in our ad. Okay. We pick up a number of tires, but they have to be, um, I think, how many? Four? Four. Four, four off okay. the rim. Yeah, I think four tires. Yeah, we pick up. We pick okay, up I those. see a lot of them that was left over. No, we probably will come back different because they can't be mixed. Okay. The tires, okay. they go one place. The rest of the stuff goes to yeah, our like transfer metal, station. Metal's different, tires okay. are yeah. different, yeah, and thank you. garbage. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, many times we leave, like the council president said, it's different. Different crews, different trucks, different. Thank you. Thank you, thank council you. president. Yes, sir. Police chief. Thank you. It'll be brief. <laughs> uh, good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the mayor for just giving uh, a quick oversight of what the police department's been doing. I know last meeting I touched upon it. I actually look forward to the upcoming meeting so that we can um, highlight all the things that we have been doing over the, the several years and to get the feedback from the community to see where the community wants us to go um, from here. Um, looking at phase two, uh, the police department has definitely uh, seen an increase in productivity. Uh, traffic has increased, both vehicle and foot traffic. Our call volume has greatly increased in the last couple uh, days or last week. Um, so we're definitely out there again working. Um, definitely see the officers in and around the communities. Um, with the nice weather in the phase two, um, actually it has nothing to do with phase two, but with just the nice weather in the time of the year, uh, our fireworks calls have increased over the last several days. Um, so I just want to remind the community, fireworks are not authorized in the city of Middletown. Um, I know there's some confusion because you can buy them legally in some of the local stores. You cannot buy them within the city, little, city limits, nor can you utilize them in the city limits. So just please be aware of that. We will have extra enforcement out um, to address that. Um, on the same topic, I've been in uh, communication with Alex Smith, Corporation Council, in regards to drafting a local city ordinance in regards to the use of fireworks. So he's exploring some options and hopefully we'll have something in the near future um, to help us with the enforcement actions there. Um, there is a resolution before you this evening to uh, accept a donation in regards to the National Night Out Against Crime for 2020. There is uh, some chatter about what to do with the National Night Out this year being that we don't know where we'll be as far as uh, our ability to have gatherings. Right now the National Night Out organization is recommending that uh, that event be pushed off to October 6th. So right now we are still kind of in limbo, but we didn't want to turn away donations. Um, many of the donors know that we have this alternative date of October 6th. Um, if something changes, we will be in communication with, with those donors to make sure that they're aware of what's going on with their, their funds. Um, over the last several weeks, and I mentioned this last, last uh, meeting, um, but I feel it needs to be mentioned again is we in the police department have received numerous uh, letters thanking us for our service, um, letters of support um, and whatnot. It's, it's super greatly appreciated. I get to read them all. We post them so the officers get to see that um, their hard work doesn't go unnoticed. Um, this week, though, I did open a package that was more heartfelt and heartwarming than, um, than we've seen. Not that the other ones don't mean as much, but this was a package from elementary school students. Um, all individualized to the officers, um, not to the individual officers, but um, to what the officers do. And this kind of caught my attention because this took more than just that student to write this letter. This was our educators, this was our parents. So it goes to show that as a community, we are 
working to support our, our first responders um, that are out doing the jobs that they do on a daily basis. So I'd like to just thank them for that. And lastly, um, June 19th, as the mayor mentioned, uh, is a special day with the Emancipation Proclamation. And it is actually the date of our next demonstration that is scheduled here in Middletown. There's a demonstration scheduled for uh, June 19th, Friday, next, next Friday, or this Friday, I'm sorry, uh, four o'clock at Davidge Park. Uh, I've been in communication with the organizer. Um, he is one of the organizers that's done one of the previous events, um, which was successful, and I'm hoping that he will be just as successful with this, this coming event. Um, we will have staff there to help support them and ensure that they are safe and um, to participate with them as well. With that, I have nothing else. Any questions for the police chief? Alden Burr. Um, Chief, are you planning on doing the neighborhood walks in uh, bringing out the, the staff in the summer as we used to walk in? In neighborhoods around the neighborhoods when just for clarification when we did it as a group or just no, the officers no. themselves? remember you said walking beats are, are you planning on doing any of that this year after all this COVID's done so i do encourage that the officers get out and walk while they have some time in between okay. calls and that is dependent on the call volume but the neighborhood enhancement program i did bring back a couple weeks ago so as they are out in the communities we try to get them to walk a little bit more than than the officers ever go and call the call okay. um so we will see some officers um depending on the call volume and what's going on community-wide um we'll determine how much but it is definitely something that is encouraged on a regular basis thank you alderman tobin i saw in the news uh the state was going to require reforms tied to funding is there any specifics about that or I, I am personally not aware of the specifics oh, okay. i'm waiting for uh some of the guidance that is uh, right. attached to some of these new laws i get frustrated too because sometimes with these mandates you know we're not all in the same places i think we're really far ahead of the curve mm -hmm. and then there's one size fit all things kind of frustrate me but i was just curious where we were or what the requirements were yeah, as, as I mentioned and the mayor mentioned, we are waiting for some of the, the guidelines and guidance to uh, kind of help us get through some of these changes. Okay, thank you. And understand them better. Anyone else? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. City Clerk. Just uh, early voting is still going on this week. It's over, early voting is over on Sunday, and it's at the Senior Center. If anybody needs the times, they're on our website. Also, June 23rd, this Tuesday, is the primary day. That's the regular voting day for the primary. Um, they are the special locations for that, which everyone who is eligible to vote in the primary should have got something in the mail on that. If there's any questions, it's all they have to do is call our, uh, City Hall on uh, the clerk's office at 346-4166, and we can help them on where they have to vote. And I know they everyone did uh, get by mail an absentee ballot vote, so I'm sure a lot of people uh, use that process to vote. But if anybody did want to go to a vote on primary day, that would be the day, other than early voting this week. And that's all I have. Anybody has any questions? Any questions, John? Okay, thanks, John. Remarks of Alderman, Alderman Massey. Nothing this evening. Alderman Tobin. I'd just like to thank the chief and the, and the mayor for their <coughs> efforts on the policing. Uh, you know, we're all in different spots, and I think we're really far ahead of the curve. I think that defund the police, that's a Black Lives Matter uh, slogan. And I think we need to talk to them to see what they mean by it. I don't think it means like just stop, you know, get rid of your police budget. I think it means something different. So I think having that dialogue will help, you know, see what people mean by that. And I think, you know, we've been, got, get, you know, whenever I talk to people from outside the area in the region, we're getting compliments on our police force and what they've been doing. So I think we're really, a lot of the things that we are doing, we're really far ahead. So. Uh, I think we're doing a good job there and then as far as moving into the phase two you know i think i borrow a line from jfk you know it's not it's not what your country can do for you it's what you can do for your country i think wearing the face masks in public is not about you it's about everybody else so don't wear your face masks for yourself it's for you know our first responders it's for the hospital workers that had to see all the, the pain and suffering in the hospitals for people like my parents that are basically locked down because they're afraid to go out much because of the COVID. Uh, for our businesses that are trying to reopen, we don't want to backslide into that into that phase one again or be locked down. So I, I agree with the mayor. Everybody, let's do our part and wear a mask, not for yourself, but for everybody else. Thank you. Alderman Green. Thank you. Yeah, Chief, I just want to um, thank you for going over the uh, the fireworks there. Uh, you know, I know we've we've heard from it from our constituents a, a, a few times, and uh, 
you know, it's everyone wants to celebrate. There's a lot going on. We've been locked up, but uh, there are legal ways to do it. And uh, dry grass and fireworks also don't go well together. Um, so with that, I do want to congratulate the class of 2020 um, as they've uh, been graduating and we've seen celebrations all around. Uh, you know, it certainly are extraordinary times for people to uh, to graduate from high school, but uh, you know, it's 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 an important thing. So, uh, congratulations to everyone, and Mayor, thank you for keeping us all updated on uh, on everything. Uh, I know I don't say it every meeting, but uh, you know, we all do appreciate your updates. So, thank you, Alderman Johnson. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, public Works meeting this evening. We made some progress on longstanding initiatives, and uh, I compliment the chair on moving us forward. Uh, skate park tough love works for me mayor um, tough love could be the best love as far as black lives matters and those issues I think obviously Minneapolis and now Atlanta have uh, set forth a lot of energy in this country hopefully to move us in a good direction we've all heard many mayors throughout this country being interviewed in the last five to ten days and uh, two concepts I've heard frequently throughout those interviews community policing and de-escalation de training so um, these are phrases we heard in this very room two weeks ago from our chief. And um, being ahead of the curve is sometimes a hazardous place to be. But in this case, um, I'm proud as we all are that we are in that place and we thank law enforcement for getting us where we are today and keep up the good work. With respect to the rallies we had, I have a good friend of mine who works with state police and he was assigned to one of those rallies on that Sunday. And we happened to get together on another matter and he just remarked on that rally and he said, and I quote, well, you must be doing something right in Middletown because the rallies went very well and they were very peaceful. So people do notice and thank law enforcement for all they're doing to keep us that way. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to say congratulations to the class of 2020. Our seniors are all virtually graduating next week. And I know that everyone's still looking for that final ceremony. But no matter what happens, I just want you seniors to know that our community, we're all very proud of you. And this is just a drop of bucket in the bucket of your life. And you will, you're about to embark on a whole new adventure. So take it all with a, in stride. Know that this just makes you a little tougher. And uh, good luck to you all. That's all I have tonight. Alderman Kleiner. Uh, thank you. I also want to thank the police department. Um, the uh, last march and protest and rally, and you know, it, it doesn't matter where it begins. It uh, goes all over town, and, and it did a remarkable job of keeping up with it and uh, keeping everyone safe. That's that's the priority, and and uh, they're really so good at it. Um, you know, in Middletown, we, we've always had, we've had Middletown Cares for many years and Mayor's Youth Council, we've had Neighborhood Watch, uh, uh, Cops and Kids, we had Police Academy, we had pop-up barbecues. Um, police have been our partners in the community with everything we do. And it, I think it really has put us ahead of the curve. So. Um, Let's let's hope. Uh, as certainly, uh, you know, the homeless outreach. Uh, we actually had a warming station committee meeting today because it's not too early to start. I mean, summer begins on Saturday and the days start getting shorter, and you don't want to be in October trying to figure out how you're going to do this because you can't pack people together the way we have, even though it's been good. But it doesn't look like we'll be able to do that. So there are a lot of things to talk over. Um, I thank the mayor for the proclamation on Juneteenth. You know, I went to Texas uh, to grad school in 1968. So I've been celebrating Juneteenth for 40 years. Uh, we had some just really my, my best friends in Texas. Um, I brought the cheesecakes and uh, they made the black eyed peas and but there was always a Juneteenth celebration. And there was much awareness of that it took two and a half years before people in Texas knew they were freed. So they had another two and a half years of being slaves while that word was kept from them. So uh, it, it's, I'm, I just love seeing it go nationwide. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful spirit. Um, I want to thank... Um, uh, Sparrow, uh, you know, Alderman Tobin and the Lions Club. I did go to the uh, 
they had a demonstration at the town of Wallkill Ambulance, and the Lions Club donated, I think, to eight different volunteer ambulance companies, uh, electrostatic uh, disinfecting equipment and spray equipment, and, and it really, um, it's amazing how it works. So that that didn't make the paper. Somebody was furloughed that week, and uh, you know, so sometimes uh, the good news doesn't get out but uh, I, I thank the Lions Club um, you know and I saw the uh, donation to the uh, to St. Paul's and the uh, food pantry so the, uh, the big uh, refrigerator so that's really good um, finally I just want to say because we don't meet again until July 7th so um, happy 4th of July happy Independence Day thank you Alderman John Fiswell yes uh, thank you uh, the DPW committee met this evening. We did have an uh, interesting conversation. Uh, I'm looking forward to continue our conversation to the next meeting. Thank you. Alderman Burr. Well, it was great to see phase two open. I finally could get a haircut after three months. Right, Joe? <laughs> Thank you. Um, like Joe says, wear your mask. I'm a businessman, and I constantly have to tell the people, put the sign on the door, you know, just for your protection and mine, as Sparrow Tobin said. And stay on course, and we can be at phase three and be very successful for all our local businesses. Thank you. Thank you. New business. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to accept a total of $1,250 in donations from local businesses supporting the National Night Out Against Crime. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Bro. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. The resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin to authorize the mayor to sign the 2019 LOSAP sponsor authorization form. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green to authorize the mayor to sign all necessary documents and certifications regarding the CDGB consolidated plan for 2020 through 2024 and 2020 action plan and the authorization for the submission of the 2020-2024 comprehensive plan and 2020 action plan along with the acceptance of the 2000 allocation in the amount of $496,700. $496,734. Resolution by Alderman McGreen, second by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Bro. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to implement the New York State legislation regarding the awarding of LOSAP credit points during the coronavirus emergency. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Greg Cassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Graham Cassoon to authorize the mayor to sign a proposal from CDM Smith for engineering and design services to assist the city with satisfying permit conditions with the DEC. Resolution by Alderman Graham Cassoon, second by John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner to authorize the approval for an amended agreement with Jacobs Engineering to begin work on time series analysis on Kinch Pond, Mill Pond, and Inagata Creek, not to exceed $39,000, with a transfer from the water fund balance. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Bro. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to authorize the mayor to sign an addendum to the Toshiba lease agreement. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Bro. Graham Cassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr 
to authorize the transfer from the general fund to the contractual services of $22,500 to cover the unbudgeted costs of services provided by the New York Sec Security Systems for the Middletown Fire Department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Thur, second one by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Bro. Graham Kazoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey. To authorize the purchase of a lien from Cheswold for 21 Lincoln Street in the amount of $14,163.46 to be used by the CDA for the Home Ownership Program. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Bro. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin for the resolution to award the bid for the annual electrical maintenance work. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Bro. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green to award the bids for the annual plumbing maintenance and work for the city buildings and facilities. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, second by Alderman Tobin. Discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to award the bids for the disposal of aluminum, metal, appliances, and cast iron. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Discussion. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. That's all for new business. On it. Mr. President, I move the accounts be ordered that the claims be adjusted and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for the payment. First by Alderman <clears throat> Massey, second by Alderman Johnson. Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Tobin? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Burr? Aye. Green? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Move for adjournment. So moved. So moved. Aye.